6th century and annexation. Britons. Sometime late in the 5th century or early in the 6th century, a group of Romano-Britons escaping the Anglo-Saxons settled in the north of the Subai kingdoms of, of Galatia, in lands which subsequently acquired the name Britonia. Most of what is now known about the settlement comes from the ecclesiastical sources. Records from the 572 Second Council of Braga refer to the diocese called the Bretonius Excelsius, the British Church, and the Apostolical See called the Seeds Bretonarium, See of the Britons, which the administrative and e ecclesiastical document, usually known as Divisio Theodermi, or Paracycal Soverum, attributed to these their own churches and the monastery, Maximi, likely the monastery of the Santa Maria de Bretonia, the bishops representing the diocese of the, of the Second Council of Braga bore the Birethic name Maloc. These see continued to the representation of the seven councils through the seventh century. King Aramir and King Theodomar. On the 1st of May, 561, King Aramir, who was the third of the year of his reign, called the First Council of Braga, being styled the most glorious king, Aramar in the Acts, the first Orthodox council held in, it, in the kingdom. It was entire, almost entirely devoted to the combination of Priscillianism, making no mention at all of the Arianism, and once, only once reproving clerics for adorning his cloths and wearing granos, a Germanic word implying either pigtails, long beard, mustache, or a Subian knot, a custom declared pagan. Of the eight assistant bishops, only one bore a Germanic name, Bishop, bishop Elderic. Later on, January 1st, 569, Aramar's successor, Theodomar, held a council in Lugo, which dealt with the administrative and ecclesiastical organization of the kingdom. At his request, the kingdom of Galatia was divided into two provinces or synods under the obedience, obedience of the metropolitans Braga and Luga, Lugo and the 13 episcopal sees. Some of them new, for which new bishops were ordered, others old, Ira Flavia, Britonia, Astorga, Ornis, and Tui in the north. Under the obedience of Lugo and the Doom, Porto, Visu, Lamigo, Combra, and Ida Avelia in the south, dependent of Braga. Each sea that was further divided into smaller territories named Excelsior and Peggy. The election of Lugo as a metropolitan of the north was due to its central location in relation to the dependent seas and that of the city. King Miro. According to John of Beclora, in 570, Miro succeeded Theromar as king of the Suvis. During his time, the Suvic kingdom was challenged again by the Visigoths, who under the king Levogild was reconstituting their kingdom, reduced and mostly ruled, and the foreigners since de their defeat by the Franks in the Battle of Vule. In 572, Miro ordered the celebration of the Second Council of Braga, which would preside over the Pannonian St. Martin of Braga, an archbishop of the Subai Kingdom capital. Martin was cultivated as a cultivated man, praised of Isidore of Seville, Finatus Fortenus, and Gregory of Tours, who led Suves to Catholicism and who promoted the culture and political renaissance of the kingdom. In the Acts of the Council, Martin declared the unity of the purity of the Catholic faith in Galatia, and for the first time, Eris was discredited. Notably, of the twelve assistant bishops, five were Suvas, Nitagus of Lugo, Widimer of Ornus, and Anila of Tui, Remisel of Viseu, Adoric of Idano Avella, 
and one of, was of Britain, Malioc. The same year, 572, Miro led an expedition against the Runicons. When the Visigoth king, Levigold, was conducting a successful military activity in the south, he had recovered for the Visigoths in the cities of Cordova and Medina Sidonia, and had a, had a successful assault on the region around the city of Malaga. But from 573, on his campaigns, got closer to Subic lands, first occupying Cerebara, later the Argenesis Mountains and Cantabria, where he expelled some invaders. Finally, in 576, he entered Galicia itself, disturbing the boundaries of the kingdom. But Miro sent ambassadors and obtained from Levigold a temporary peace. It was probably during the period that the Suvi also sent some ambassadors to the Frankish king Gontram, who was intercepted by Cliperic near Poitras and imprisoned for a year, as recorded by Gregory of Tours. Later in 579, Levigold's son, Prince Hermegild, rebelled against his father, proclaiming himself king. He was, while residing in Seville, he converted to Catholicism under the influence of his wife, the Frankish princess in Gildas, of Seville. In open opposition to the Arianism of his father, but not it was not until 582 that Levigild gathered his armies to attack his son. First he took Merida, then in 583 he marched to Seville. Under siege, Hermitgild's rebellion became dependent on the other support offered by the Eastern Roman Empire, which controlled most of the southern capital regions of Hispania since Justinian I and by the Suves. The same year, Miro, king of the Galatians, marched south with his army and the intention of breaking through the blockade. But when camped, he found himself besieged by Levengold and was then forced to sign a treaty of fidelity with the Visigoth king. After exchanging presents, Miro returned to Galicia, which were laid to bed some days later, dying soon after due to the some bad weather of Spain. According to Gregor of Tours, Hermenegild's rebellion ended in 584, and Levigild bribed the Byzantines with 3,000 solitia, thereby depriving the son of his support. Last Kings On the death of Miro, his son Uberic was made king, but apparently not before sending tokens of appreciation and friendship to Levigold. Not a year later, his brother-in-law, named Adusia, accompanied by the army, seized power. He took Uberic into a monastery, forced him to be ordained as a priest, therefore making him ineligible for the throne. Then Odysseus married Siscuntia, King Miro's widow, and made himself king. The usurpation and the friendship granted by Eberic gave Levigild the opportunity to seize the neighboring kingdom. In 585, Levigild went to war against the Suves, invading Galicia. In the words of John of Bicero, King Levigild devastates Galicia and deprives Odysseus of total the totality of the kingdom. The nation of the Subes, their treasured and fatherland, are conducted in his own power and turned into a province of the Goths. During the campaign, the Franks of King Guntram attacked Sympatania, maybe trying to help the Subes. At the time, sending ships to Galicia, which were intercepted by Levigold's troops, who were there, took their cargo and killed or enslaved most of their crews. Thus was the kingdom transferred to the Goths as one of the three administrative regions, Galicia, Hispania, and Gallia Narbonensis. Odysseus, captured, was tonsured and forced to take holy orders, then sent into exile in Bea in southern Lusitania. The same year, 585, a man named Malaric rebelled against the Goths and reclaimed the throne but he was finally defeated and captured by the generals of Levigild, who took him to the chains of the Visigoth king. Annexation 
After the conquest, King Levigold reintroduced the Aryan Church among the Suvis, but that was a short-lived institution because after his death in 586, his son Recared openly promoted the mass conversion of Visigoths and Suvs to the Catholicism. Recared's plans were opposed by a group of Aryan conspirators, and the, its leader, Sega, was exiled to Galicia after his hands were amputated. The conversion occurred during the Third Council of Toledo, with the assistance of 72 bishops from Hispania, Gaul, and Galicia. There, eight bishops renounced their Arianism, among them four Suvi. Aragophus of Porto, Basilia of Lugo, Guardians of Tui, and Sanilla of Visigo. The main conversion was celebrated by the King Ricard. Not only the conversion of the Goths is found and among the favors that were received, but also the infinite multitude of Suves, whom the divine assistance was to have subjected to our realm. Although led in heresy by eternal fault, with our dil diligence we were brought them to the origins of truth. He was styled as the King of the Visigoths and of the Tuvi and the later sent him to Pope Gregory the Great soon after. Under the Goths, the administrative apparatus of the Suvi kingdom was initially maintained. Many of the Suvi districts established during the reign of Theromar had, are also known as later Visigoth mints. But during the middle years of the 7th century, administrative and ecclesiastical reform led to the disappearance of most of these mints, with the exception of of the, of the cities of Braga, Lugo, and Tui. Also the northern Lusitanian bishops, bi bishoprics of Lemio, Viso, Cumbria, and Ida Avella, in the lands which had been annexed to Galatia in the 5th century, were returned to the obedience of Merida. It was also pointed out that no visible Gothic immigration took place during the 6th and 7th century into Glacia. The last of the Suves and the separate peoples date to the 10th century gloss in the Spanish Codex. Hank, Arbor, Romani, Pruni, Volcant, Spani, Nixum, Udati, and Goti el Suba, and Calpretin, Celebre discant. This tree is called plum tree by the Romans, Nixum by the Sp Spaniards, and Vandals and the Suves and the Goths and the Celtiberians call it Cerellium. But the context of Subai probably means simply Galatia. List of Galatian Subic mon monarchs Hermeric from 409 to 438. Hermagarius from 427 to 429, he was also the leader in Lusitania. Rikilia from 438 to 448. Rikiliar from 448 to 456. Eolf from 456 to 457, he was a foreigner, possibly appointee of the Visigoths. Maldras from 456 to 460, and he was in opposition to Frantma after 457. Frantma, 457, in opposition to Maldras. Richemund from 457 to 464, successor of Frantma. Frumar from 460 to 464, successor of Maldras. Resamund from 464 to 469, succeeded Frumar, reunited the Subai. Then there was a period of obscurity. From 485, it was Hermeneric. Viramund in 535. Thittermund in the 6th century. Chereric, after four, 550 to 558 and 559, existence sometimes doubted. Aramir, from 558 to 559 and 561 to 566. Thedomar, from 566 to 560, 561 to 566 and 566 to 570. Miro, from 570 to 583. Eberic from 583 to 584, deposed and put into the monastery by Adeca. Adeca from 584 to 585, deposed and put into monastery by Levigild. And Maleric, 585, de opposed Levigild and was defeated. 
Sources and Controversies Unlike some other barbarian peoples, such as the Vandals, Visigoths, Ostrogoths, and Huns, which played an important part in Roman's, Rome's loss of the western provinces, the Suves established themselves in Galatia and northern Lusitania, which were remote in extra-Mediterranean areas, seldom posed a threat to Rome and to its Roman interests. In fact, at times, were we had a more detailed knowledge of the history throughout the diversity of the sources. That was precisely when they became a challenge. As it was under the reign of Rachelia, throughout their history as an independent nation, they maintained an important diplomatic activity, most notably with Rome, the Vandals and the Visigoths, and later the Franks. Again, they became important players during the reign of Miro. In the last third of the 6th century, when they allied with other Catholic powers, the Franks and Eastern Romans, in support of Hermagild and against the Visigoth king Levigild. Because of their relative isolation or remoteness, sources about the Subai people are limited, and they number translated into English even fewer. The most important source of history of the Subai during the 5th century in the chronic, chronicle written by the native bishop Hydatius in 470 as a continuation of the chronicle of St. Germain. Hydatius was born circa 400 in the city of Limici, straddling the southern borders of modern-day Galicia and Portugal. On the valley of the Lima River, he witnessed the 409 settlement of the Suvai peoples in Iberian Peninsula, and the Galicia transformed from Roman provinces into an independent barbarian kingdom. Through much of his life, he was forced to stay in isolated Roman communities, constantly threatened by the Suvai and Vandals, though we also know that he traveled in several occasions outside of Hispania for learning of an ambassador, and he maintained the correspondence with the other bishops. In 460, he was captured by the Suvic warlord Frumarius, accused of treason by other local men after being held captive for three months as the Suvai ravaged the region of Caves. He was released and unharmed. Against the will of the men he had accused him, Hydatus Chronicle, which purporting to the universal slowly turns in the local history, following the barbarian settlement, he relates the conflict among the diverse nations. Later, he has also narrates the, success, the frequent conflict of the Suves with the local barely Romanized Galatians. The decline of the Roman powers in Hispania, their expansion of the Suvi into the south and the east, their defeat at the hands of the Visigoths and other Roman fortetary forces, as the posterior reconstruction of their kingdom under the Resimund, together with the conversion to Arianism, while he considered this a great historian, his portraits are usually obscure, with which are any reason of direct of direction given to the decisions of the movement of the Suvi by mentioning that the Suvi did, but rarely did what they said or what they pretended. So Hydratus' image of the Suvi is from the outside, a lawless marauders. The description of the Suvi has bled into secondary sources. E.A. Thompson, as experts who have written many pieces on the subject, stated, they just lash out blindly from year to year at any place that the suspected would supply them with food, valuables, or money. Another important st source from the history of the Suves during the initial settlement phase in the seven books of his story against the pagans by Aurorasus, another local historian, he painted in a different picture of the initial settlement of the Suves and Vandals, less catastrophic than he narrated of Hydratus. In the narration, Suves and Vandals, after a violent entrance into Hispania, resumed a specific life, pacific life, which many poor locals joined them, fleeing from Romans and taxes and impositions. However, as it has been pointed out, his narration is also biased by his agenda, as he was trying to manipulate Christianity for the fall and de decadence of Rome. The conflict of Vandals and Suves is also narrated by Gregory of Tours, 
who was in the 6th century, narrated the blockade, the death, and Gundrick under unknown circumstances. The resolution of the conflict of the champions' fight with the defeat vandals forced leave Galicia. Somewhat different history apparently was told among the vandals. As Procopius wrote that in their traditions, King Gunderic was captured and impaled by the Germans in Spain. For the f- mid-5th century, we also chapter 44 of Jordan's Getica, which narrates the defeat of the Subai king, Ricar, the hands of the Roman Fodorati troops, commanded by the Visigoths. It is vivid in brief narration where Ricar, a defiant man, has a purpose, a mood, and emotions, as do the rest of the protagonists. The ending of the Chronicle of Hovidatus in 469 marks the beginning of a period of obscurity in the history of the Suves, who did not reemerge into history's light until the mid-6th century, when they had plenty of sources. Among these, the most notable are the works of Panarinian Martin of Braga, sometimes called the Apostle of the Suves, as well as the accounts of Gregory of Tours in the Miracles of St. Martin. Gregory narrated the attributed to a miracle of St. Martin of Tours, the conversion of King Charic of Catholicism, while the history of the Franks had dedicated several chapters to the relations of the Suves, Visigoths, and Franks, and to the end of the independence of the Suvi, annexed by the Visigoths in 585. On the other hand, Martin of Braga, and a monk who arrived in Galicia at 550 began a true transforming power. As founder of the monasteries and the bishop of Abbot of Doom, he promoted the conversion of the Suves, and later an archbishop of Braga and maximum religious authority of the kingdom he participated in the reformation of the church and of local administration. Several of the works had been preserved, among them a formula for an honest life dedicated by the king of Miro, and treaties against the superstitions of the country's inhabitants, and several others minor treaties. He was also present in the councils of Braga, and the deliberations on the second one being led, and the archbishop of the capital Braga. The acts of these councils, together with the Divisio Theramodiri, are the pre- precious sources on the inner political and religious life in the kingdom. Of paramount pre- importance is also the chronicle written by John of Beclero, a Visigoth circa 590, which probably partial. His accounts are previous for the last 15 years of independence of the Suves, as well as for the first year of the Suves under the Visigoth rule. Finally, a great interest is also a history written by Isidore of Seville. He used Hydratus' accounts, together with the Chronicle of John of Biclaro, to form an abridged history of Suvi in Hispania. The controversy around Isidore's historiography is centered on its own omissions and additives, additions, which was many historians and scholars considered too numerous to be simply mistakes. Throughout Isidore's history of the kings of the Goths, Vandals, and Suves, certain details from Hydratus were altered. Many scholars attribute these changes to the fact that Isidore may have had sources other than Hydratus at his disposal. It has been said that the history and the relevance of the Suvic Galicia was long marginalized and obscured inside Spain, mainly for political reasons. It was left to the German scholar, Rehem Reinhardt, to write the first connected history of Subai and Galicia, or more accurately, Galicia as the official separation between Galicia and Portugal, and would only take place in 1095. Cultural Legacy As the Subai quickly adopted the vulgar Latin language, and a few traces were left of the Germanic tongue in the Galician and Portuguese languages. Distinguishing between loanwords from Gothic or Suvic is difficult, but there is a series of words, characteristics of Galicia and northern half of Portugal, which are attributed either to the Subai or to the Goths, although no major Visigoth immigration into Galicia is known for 8th century. These words are rule in nature relative to the animals, agriculture, and country life. Laverica Lark from Proto-Germanic 
Lawasikon, Lark, Menazerga, Titmouse, same word as Old Norse, meaning Titmouse from Maison, Titmousia. Libio or Levio, Vingrape, to Lauben, Foliage. Britar to break, from Briturian to break. Esca brush, from ancient Scala bowl, from Skelio bowl. Uva elf sprint, from Albaz elf. Marco boundary stone, from Pumarcan frontier limit. Groba gully, from Grobo grove. Mega guts of fish, and SMR to trash, smash. Bremar to yearn, from the terror. Trusa Snowslide from Gunatudu. Most notable were their contributions to local top toponymy and anthropomny, as personal names born to the Suves were in use among gl Glacians up to the Middle Low Ages, and the East Germanic names in general most commonly used among locals during the High Middle Ages. From these names, in derived also a rich toponymy found mainly in northern Portugal and Galicia, and made up of several thousand places names derived directly from Germanic personal names, expressed as Germanic or Latin genitives. Sadelis, medieval synodalis, Germanic genitive form of the same syndilia, Mondrais from the Latin genitive word for Mundaris Mederix, Gondomar from the Gondomar, and Baltar from Baltari, both of Portugal and Galicia, Gilzeric and Visiti. Another group of toponyms which points to the old Germanic settlements are the places named Sa, Sa, Sas in Galicia, and Sa in Portugal, all derived from the Germanic word Sa, Sal, house or half, and distributed mostly among Braga, Porto, and the Minho River Valley in Portugal and around Lugo and Galicia, totaling a few hundred. In modern Galicia, four parishes and six towns and villages are still named Suvos or Sugios, from the medieval or Suvis, all of them from the Latin Suvos, Suves, and referring to the old Suvai settlements.